These are every single one of Spider-Man's powers. Today we will take a unique, deeper look into these powers and actually rank them based on how effective and overall practical they would be in the real world in 2023. And let me just tell you guys, a lot of these powers aren't actually that good. I'm not gonna lie. Like if you look at Spider-Man's fast reflexes, his fast reflexes could also mean anyone that surprises him accidentally would get punched by his powerful hand and now they're dead. So, do you get it? Cause like he's so fast, he turns around, boom, and now they're dead. So you see how we're gonna take a unique look at things? We're gonna look at them from a different perspective. You get it? Okay, okay, okay. We'll come back to his fast reflex ability later, but for now, let's begin with web swinging. Now guys, as you all know, Spider-Man's go-to transportation method is web swinging. And I'm not gonna lie guys, it's actually one of the worst transportation methods ever. And this is because of the law of randomness. There are much better transportation methods out there that don't involve such an awkward angle of movement. Because as you guys see right here, when Spider-Man web slings from building to building, he cannot fully precisely control where he's going to end up in the air. Sometimes he may be up there, but now he has to gain momentum so he's down there. Like he won't have the opportunity to time himself perfectly always. Meaning if he wants to somehow land on top of an enemy, maybe give him a surprise attack, he has to have so much more involvement of timing, he has to have involvement of speed, all of that has to go into his mind first. And you compare that to any other superhero like The Flash, where his transportation route is literally from start to finish. Zoom, that's it, he's there. He's literally whoop 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 there, that's it. But Spider-Man has to go, oh, up, down, up, down. Like, it's really, really ineffective for a superhero. Now, the one good quality about this could actually be, since Spider-Man is always in a random line of path, it's gonna be very, very hard to time and shoot him. Like, if an enemy's trying to kill Spider-Man, come here, Tom Holland, boom, boom, boom. Like, how are you ever gonna see that man that's going boom, blah, 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 blah. Like, it's impossible. It's so impossible. So, ladies and gentlemen, overall, I'd actually say web swinging is actually meh. That's it. It's really just... Eh, like, I don't know what else to say. He'll never be able to precisely land anywhere or get somewhere in a very effective way. No matter how much he practices, there's always gonna be some sort of, like, element of luck to it. But of course, he can never be hit because he's always, you know. So A is good, okay? Shut up, A is good. Okay, okay. But now, as you guys can see in the bottom left, the next Spider-Man power we have to talk about is wall climbing. First off, I'd say it's very, very beneficial because it allows Spider-Man to get into unique places such as a secret underground hideout because he can go through the vents or it can help him recover from a bad swing. Like, imagine he swings and he just sticks to the wall. <gasps> I'm safe, I'm safe. You get what I'm saying? He can also like climb up to a good vantage point, kind of make him feel like he's in Assassin's Creed and he can kind of just sit up there and like look around, make a good plan. So it's kind of useful in all of those aspects, right? But guys, if we talk about wall climbing in terms of combat effectiveness, like how useful it is in combat, I mean, there's not really much to it. The only scenario I can think of after literally sitting down for 10 minutes and trying to think my hardest, I think maybe if he's in a one-on-one -on -one hand fight, like boom, boom, like one-on-one -on -one fight, right? I think maybe if he wants to rest, he can just like jump up 10 feet, like, and then hang there and like rest up, catch his breath <sighs> while he's literally hanging. Look down at the enemy. Since he doesn't have a gun, he can't do anything. Just keep hanging and then come back and fight. So it's like a way for you to escape temporarily and then come back and fight. But besides that, there really is no point of wall climbing in this scenario. Like guys, I've seen so many strong superheroes. So like these powers have to really impress me to make it high on the list. And I'd say wall climbing is good to be Assassin's Creed if you want to get like a good vantage point, sneak into places. But besides that, it's... It's kind of mid. Like, what? What? You want to climb a wall, sweetheart? Go ahead, you fucking loser. Oh, I'm, I'm Peter Parker. I want to... Shut the hell up, nerd. You're literally 45 years old climbing a wall. How old are you? 28? 27? You're climbing a wall at 27 years old? What is wrong with you, sweetheart? Actually ask yourself, what are you doing with your life? I don't know why I did all that. I'm sorry, guys. It's good too, I guess. It's good. Wall climbing is good. It's definitely not insane. It's definitely not great. Yeah, guys, I'm not gonna lie. I think I would put it right here. Yeah, it's good, I guess. But now this next power, okay, this one's a little bit spicy. Let's talk about Spider-Man's super strength. Now, guys, I truly believe this one right here is probably the most effective, strong power he has because this power allows him to do all of his other powers at a higher level. He can jump higher because of his super Super strength. He can web swing further because of his super strength. He can stick to walls longer because of his super strength. Everything ties into the super strength. Apparently Spider-Man's strength is actually proportional to that of a real spider and a quick science fact will tell you most real spiders can lift up to 160 times their own weight. 160 guys. 160. So assuming Spider-Man is not like some skinny nerd. But I mean, I mean he, he can't. He, he kind of is, but like, let's just assume he's like 170 pounds. We do 170 times 160. 170 times 160. And you find out he can lift 27,000. No, no, no. 27,000 pounds. 
baby girl do you guys understand what i'm saying to you right now i feel like you're not understanding but now guys obviously we've got to make this video interesting let's make this a little interesting let's talk about the very very big downside of spider-man's strength if we take a look at this from a very unique angle one of the biggest reasons spider-man's super strength is bad is because it is literally too overpowered let me explain really quick if you walk around as powerful as spider-man does the sheer output of force you make with anything in the world will seem so normal take for example if peter parker spider-man goes up to his friend and shakes his hand to spider-man he'll think okay i'm just shaking my friend's hand i love him hey but to your friend you would have broken every singular bone inside of his hand every singular bone do you get my point now so what that means now is spider-man has to teach himself the perfect balance of how much force to put into things so maybe when he shakes his friend's hands he has to put in like 10 percent of the force when he fights a main evil villain he has to put 95 percent when he's about to die he has to put 100 percent all these little percentages will get confusing in his head and eventually since you know humans make mistakes people make mistakes eventually he's gonna mess these percentages up break his friend's hand or accidentally punch an enemy where he's trying to neutralize them and kill him instead because of the power balance he is too overpowered do you guys not understand I am literally him? Like, the ideas I put in your minds are crazy. Are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it's for this reason that I'd literally say still a great power. No, screw it. I'd say it's insane. It's still insanely good. There is still that one con, but this makes all of his other abilities way, way stronger. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is his first insane power. Super strength. The ability to stop boats from literally falling apart. The ability to stop a train and rip your suit in half to save some ordinary civilians. I love that. I'm into it and I want to kiss you, Peter Parker. I think something's definitely like mentally up with me. Something, Something's definitely up, but let's move on. Let's now talk about the next power. Let's talk about spider senses. Ladies and gentlemen, Spider-Man's spider sense is the exact reason why Spider-Man will never, ever, ever be snuck up on. He will never catch a sneak attack. You will never be able to catch Spider-Man lacking and he will never, ever die because of it. Do you know how many times in the real world people have died because they were caught lacking? Oh, I'm sitting here at the, at the club with my friends. Oh, oh. shot dead. Shot dead, that's it. Shot dead. Shot dead, that's it. But Spider-Man will never ever let that happen because of his spider sense. And you guys don't understand, but if you really think about it, Spider-Man in the real world, if you guys were Spider-Man, he would have so many ops. Everyone would be his op because he's literally saving the world. Every single hood man would be trying to kill him, every gangster would try to kill him, and he would never be caught lacking because he's always aware. Like there's literally scenes in the Tom Holland movie where you can literally see Peter Parker's arm hair stand up because of uncommon things happening far, far away. He can literally sense he can feel the air pressure change but ladies and gentlemen there's also many many scenarios where spider senses simply won't work take for example if spider-man is inside a crowded building trying to sense a certain type of presence that would be next to impossible if you're trying to sense for like something with a certain type of presence but there's people all around you doing different types of air pressures walking around making noises it would be so so hard but of course these are still very very niche little scenarios and overall the big positive impact of spider-man never being able to be caught lacking is so so strong so i'm not gonna lie guys we talk about spider senses you got it bro great it's great it's not insane because like me personally i just don't think like overall it's crazy insane but it's still very good very very good and when we talk about spider-man's enhanced speed and agility there's not really much to say it's a pretty basic power but the one thing i will say that a lot of people don't mention his speed and agility is pretty good it's very good actually against human villains other human villains that he can take one-on-one -on -one or like even 1v3 it's fine because as you all know if you ever see him fight like an actual big villain like a super villain such as green lantern you can see that a lot of times he can barely make it out. A lot of times he literally just gets crushed by cement because he's not fast enough. So I think against normal civilians, he's very, very fast, can easily body all of them. But I think against super villains, he's not fast enough for me to say, okay, okay, he's quick. He's really quick, you know? Because I see a lot of times where he's just too slow, in my opinion. But of course, someone could also be in my comments and argue, but Kosho, his agility is what lets him fight these super villains for longer. Uh, but, uh, uh. So if you talk about that, sure. You know what? He gets points for that. I just... I just give it eh. I'm gonna put this in eh because it's whatever. It's really whatever. And yeah, I'm not gonna lie, guys. I don't have much else to say about the speed category because, to be honest, this category kind of triggers me because people love talking Spider Man so fast, so fast. What happened to Gwen Stacy? No, look me in the eyes. Come here, Peter Parker. What happened to Gwen Stacy? My favorite Peter Parker, Andrew Garfield. Talk to me. What happened to Gwen Stacy? What happened to Gwen Stacy? Huh? Tell me. Oh, you couldn't save her then, huh? Where's your speed at, buddy? Where's your speed? Shut the hell up, nerd. Shut up, nerd. All these kids. All these kids love talking. Oh, he's so fast. Shut the hell up, nerd. You couldn't save Gwen Stacy, my favorite character. Screw Zendaya. I hate her. Screw the other girl. I hate her. Gwen Stacy is so 
fine. I love her. And you couldn't save her, you nerd. I want to kill you. I want to kill you so bad. I don't care. I don't care. No, now I'm mad. I don't care. It's going in insanely bad. Your speed is insanely bad, you nerd. You nerd. All right, fine. All right, fine. Sorry, whatever. Fine. I'll go in A. Eh. We'll put it in A. Eh. Whatever, bro. But now moving on, the next super, super popular power we have to talk about is web shooting. Now hear me out, guys. What if I told you Spider-Man's worst power, one of his worst ever powers, is web shooting? And wait, everyone shut up for a second. I actually mean that. I really mean that. Let me explain. Obviously, shooting webs is a very, very interesting power, but if you break it down fully, if you completely break it down, you are shooting spider webs out of your wrist. Actual spider webs. Like if, it, like if any of you have any attics or if you go to the basement, all that dusty furniture, you know those little like webs that's kind of all around it? That's what Spider-Man is shooting at enemies. What? So when we talk about combat effectiveness, they do no damage at all. And video games know this. If you guys played any of the Spider-Man video games, there's a reason Spider-Man has to spam the shooting web button 184 times before the enemy can stand still and gets neutralized. And that's literally the only upside. If you want to neutralize an enemy and you don't want to kill them, shoot 100 webs at them and then they'll stand still for like 20 seconds. Whoa, whoa, bro, you good. Shut the hell up, nerd. Why would anyone ever think this is a really good ability. It's so lame. Why would I ever risk standing still and spamming this power to just freeze an enemy when I can instead punch them with my super strength or web swing them or kick them, anything else that involves me not sitting there like a dummy. And another downside to this ability is in a lot of the Spider-Mans, if you want to shoot the webs, you have to have the web fluid. So whenever a scenario comes up where Spider-Man doesn't have the web fluid, he is literally forced to adapt and change his tactics, which could obviously be very, very risky, very, very dangerous to him, but he literally doesn't have an option. He has to rely on literally web liquid. He has to rely on this. Compare that to other superheroes like the Flash, where Flash's abilities to throw lightning literally comes from within, inside of him. Inside of his heart, he can throw these things out. As long as he always has his power, he will always be able to do that. Spider-Man, the same cannot be said. So I'm not gonna lie, a lot of you guys are about to get mad at me for this, but screw it. I'm a gangster. YOLO swag. I'm gonna have to say web swinging is trash. If you really break it down to a real, real level and you talk about what a fearsome superhero should look like, I don't really imagine someone shooting webs out of his hand. Like, it's only cool in instances where he uses other abilities with it. It can't be good alone. Like, in the train scene, it was really cool because he used webs, but he used a bunch of them and he used his super strength to hold all of it together. It was like, ah, it was cool, right? But if you're just shooting webs at an enemy, like, by itself, it's cringe. It's lame. But I mean, I guess without the webs, he wouldn't be able to save all those people. Okay, 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 let's move it up let's go let's go to a let's go to a because there's some instances where it's really needed to save millions of lives so it's good there because there's a lot of scenarios that i think about now like it is kind of useful but it just it's like I don't care. Screw it. It's staying an ant. It's ant. I don't care. As you guys can see, the next power we have to talk about is spider tracers. And this one, I know most of you probably didn't even know existed. But yeah, this is a very, very common power in the comics. But the power basically is like Spider-Man has tracers in his hands that allow him to inject a spider out of his hand that kind of acts as like a GPS tracer to anything that he attaches it to. It's kind of a cool thing. I'm pretty sure it might have been in the movies, but I'm just too lazy to go check because... Well, it's like 4 a.m. while I'm recording this, so yeah, yeah. And it can always be very useful for the obvious reasons. If you want to go track a big enemy, you kind of just plop it onto someone's car and you follow them back. It's super cool, you know? It's a very cool way to kind of follow someone around. And also, I'm sure with the right technology, you could probably put a camera on that. So if you want to go spy on someone, you don't even have to be there. You can kind of just sneak itself way in. But if I'm being honest, I feel like most enemies and most powerful people that he would be tracking anyways are smart enough to detect a tracker. Like, I feel like all the powerful people he's going to go up against and want to maybe track, they already know. They already have the precautions in place to avoid anything sticking to their vehicle. Does that make sense? So yeah, I'm not gonna lie, this ability is kind of a miss. I don't really care. If you guys can comment and let me know why they added this in the comics, because it really, like, it's cool. You put a Spider-Man out of your hand, but like, but really quickly, look at the screen. Look at the screen. You're looking? Okay, great. Look at the Spider-Man down here, right? You see? Spider, spider. Insanely bad. Insanely bad. Insanely bad. I don't care. I really don't care. What? You want me to care about a spider? Do I care? Do I really care? Like, get these useless powers out of my face, guys. I'm not gonna lie. The more I make this video, I kind of realize that Spider-Man isn't as OP as I thought. But I think he's actually pretty well balanced because as you can see, most of the powers are like kind of in the middle section. There's some insane ones like super strength, but they're kind of just tapered towards the middle. So he's kind of just mid, I guess. But now, ladies and gentlemen, if you look at the bottom left, now the next power we have to talk about is speed healing. Yes, Spider-Man has speed healing, guys. By the way, I hope these pictures kind of make sense because I feel like, like maybe I feel like maybe some of these pictures don't make sense, but like this one hopefully makes sense because he's like damaged and injured, right? So like it's kind of like showing that once he's injured, he can heal and be good. 
you guys get it like i hope most of these make sense okay if they don't comment below and say kosho blah 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 you know just say that but yeah anyways let's talk about speed healing uh, 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 uh. and also really quick if you guys have made it this far in the video and you're still here make sure you comment gwen stacy comment gwen stacy so i know who really made it this far and my real supporters that really watch my videos baby mwah, mwah. now the points we'll talk about when it comes to spider-man speed healing i'm sure you guys have never ever heard before these are going to be some very very unique takes one of the biggest pros when it comes to spider-man speed healing is it allows him to get back into action quickly and endure more challenging battles basically take for example spider-man can fight five people in one day right take the number five he fights five people he gets pretty beaten up and then he has to rest for the day right but now if you take spider-man with speed healing he can fight those same five he can get hurt he can recover the same day and fight five more so mathematically what that's showing you is he's essentially maximizing his potential positive output to the world he's able to save double triple quadruple the amount of people because his injuries aren't a constraint that's holding him back but now ladies and gentlemen let's dive even deeper let's dive into some deep deep thinking and talk about why speed healing may actually be a very very big downside to spider-man a very important point that you guys must think about psychologically as spider-man heals faster he might sometimes underestimate the severity of his injuries what that means is if we go back to a scenario of five fights imagine spider-man fights five people he gets healed again but he feels like he's fully healed again right imagine he feels like he's like 90 percent good again but that 10 percent is still there but of course he's spider-man so he's on the go he goes back out and that 10 percent costs him his life do you get what I'm saying? Like speed healing is a thing that will allow him to do so much more work and take so much more damage that I feel like at one point he'll get to the point where he's always taking damage constantly, 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 healing as fast as he can, not making sure that, you know, he's fully healed up 100% and then those injuries adding up over time, his body getting more broken, healing temporarily, but having a more damaging temporal effect. So he gets more injured over time, over time. And then one day he goes out to a fight, he's fighting 20 people in the same day and all those past injuries that he didn't fully heal from quickly enough but he just thinks he did because speed healing i'm quick will catch up to him and have him killed does that make sense like psychologically the confidence in himself because of the speed healing is what will get him killed he will think okay i can take on five guys because of how speed healing i have so let me try 10 guys let me take on 15 guys and that will be the downfall of his life so if you really think about it on that deeper level there is still a downside to this but overall i'd still say speed healing is a net great i like i can't argue that it is a net positive for him if he didn't have this he would be way way less stronger he would probably have one fight with one big villain imagine him getting hit by one laser tail and now he can't save anyone for an entire week so all the damages happen all the bad things would happen in that week you know but now ladies and gentlemen the fourth and last power we must rank is spider-man's durability how durable and like strong and tough is spider-man really and ladies and gentlemen the answer to this question oh super durable he is so so durable <laughs> what the heck there have been instances where thousands and thousands of pounds of concrete have fallen on this man and he has come out alive alive this strong durability that allows him to take on so much more pressure on his body allows him to engage in battle with stronger villains knowing the fact that he can withstand stronger and harder damage like if spider-man didn't have the durability he would have now he would never go and fight the lizard man because he'd be scared oh my god he's so big and fearsome i can't take a single punch from him you know if he had the durability of a normal civilian one bad fall from a web swing could literally end his life so his durability is very very obviously important and like imagine a world where spider-man himself couldn't fight electro man because one shock from the electrical man would kill him he would literally die from one electrical blast think about how tragic and pathetic of a spider-man that would be you know so obviously a very very good thing but now let's also dive into the psychology behind it and talk about why there's also a drawback here psychologically his enhanced durability gives spider-man the feeling that he is so almighty powerful that he can attack anything he will be able to fight anything because he believes I'm so durable I'm so strong thousands of pounds of concrete have fallen on me I'm strong enough to take this challenger on obviously in the movies spider-man somehow beats everyone but let's be real it's a movie obviously he's gonna win he can't just die and the movie ends duh but me and you are deeper level thinkers baby girls we're so much deeper let's talk about past the movie let's move past the movie what happens if you are actually spider-man you laying down in your bed right now watching my video on YouTube you are 
Spider-Man. Imagine you. And you know, you're chilling at a coffee shop, sipping some coffee. I love you, Gwen Stacy. All of a sudden, a truly powerful being, a truly powerful being enters the city you swore you would protect. Other people, other normal civilians, because they don't have the enhanced durability, would run in the opposite direction because they know deep down in their minds they can't fight this powerful being, so they would just run. It's the smarter decision. But now you, as Spider-Man, because of your durability, will head into the fight. And now when you fight the guy and realize he's 270 times stronger than you, it is now too late and you are now dead. And I know a lot of you guys might not like these scenarios. You're like, oh my god, it's too much. Shut up, shut up. But we're here to talk about things from a unique perspective. This could really happen. How many times have you guys seen a superhero show where the main guy is like, screw it, I'm going in the fight. Everyone tells him, please Barry, please Flash, please Peter Parker, don't go in the fight, don't go in. But he's like, I'm strong, I'm Flash, I'm Peter Parker, I can go in the fight, I can win. You build an ego because of how strong you are, so you go in the fight. So that is the drawback right here too. You are becoming so strong, you're becoming so durable that you think you can take on everyone. So when someone stronger actually comes to you and kills you it is your fault ah the way i speak i'm electric baby girl oh my god ah! <laughs> so now putting my 200 IQ into this, I would actually say his durability is good, I guess. Because obviously he needs the durability to be able to fight these bigger villains or else he would literally be useless. But a lot of times his durability builds up his ego, which gets him killed and in danger. And sometimes he might even get other people in danger. Think about it. Gwen Stacy died because she was in a battle between Spider-Man and the Jokester guy, right? But imagine if Spider-Man didn't have the ego and didn't think he could beat Joker, he would never fight the Joker guy. He wouldn't fight him. He would always just defend himself, blah, blah, blah. And and then Gwen Stacy would never die. There's always a different way to look at things, you know? But now moving on, let's talk about the third last power. Let's talk about Spider-Man's enhanced vision. Now, Spider-Man's enhanced vision to an ordinary person would be a very, very good power, right? Everyone would think, okay, it's obviously very good, very great. But what if I told you once again, this is actually not the case and Spider-Man's enhanced vision is actually one of his biggest weaknesses. Let me explain. Now, when looking at the good side of these things, obviously it's great because it allows him to be able to spot important things like enemies or some sort of weapon from a very long distance right he doesn't have to come close range he can be far and kind of look at things scout the situation all of that and during combat it also allows him to catch important details like an enemy's combat style how an enemy fights his combat stance how to beat the enemy find his weaknesses all of that but the same strength of having the great vision of being able to detect other people's weaknesses is spider-man's biggest weakness as you all know spider-man's eyes are so so powerful in the mcu movies he literally had to wear a special type of contact lens that protects his eyes from overexposure you guys get where I'm going with this yet? Anyone know? Maybe comment it if you know. You don't know anything yet? Okay, let me explain. Are you sure? Are you sure? Like, think about it. Put the pieces together. No? Okay. Okay. Still no? Yo, are you- are you dumb? Are you- no, like, are you, like, actually dumb a bit? The reason this is one of the biggest weaknesses is because now those special lenses has become the weakness. One really solid, well-calculated punch from an enemy, and there goes his protective lens. And now our beautiful Peter Parker is vulnerable to overexposure. His eyes could literally be overexposed because his contact lenses will fall out, and he will literally burn in the eyes. There's many scenarios where if he's in a very bright lit room, or the enemy knows this, so he puts him in a bright lit room, he sets it up in a way, he punches his lens out, and and now he is blind because he's overexposed and the lens was his weakness. Guys, if you take anything away from this video is one, I'm super hot, I'm super good looking, obviously, duh. But also, every single good thing has some sort of a bad side. Everything has a downside to it. And this reminds me a lot about the story. I don't know if you guys have heard the story, but I love this beautiful story of like a Roman empire where there was a soldier named Achilles heel, right? And it's a Roman myth where a guy named Achilles was dipped in a fountain, which made him invincible. Every single part of his body that touched the water fountain, everything that touched into the fountain made him invincible. Invincible, right? And he dipped all of his body into the pond to make his whole body invincible, but he dipped it using his heel. So he grabbed his heel, dipped him head first into the pond, and that's how he became invincible. So many, many years go by, they all go by, and he becomes one of the strongest warriors of all time. He's fighting many, many people because he's literally invincible. His skin has become bulletproof. He can't die. But now, ladies and gentlemen, that power was his biggest weakness because he got dipped into the pond by the heel. The one part of his body that was not dipped into the pond was his heel because that was what was holding him up. So ladies and gentlemen, that was his biggest weakness. And one day he got shot by an arrow with a strategic hit into the heel and that was the end of Achilles. And now you guys know the tale of Achilles heel. That can apply to everything in life. Whenever there is something really, really powerful, a positive output, there's always some downside to it that you just aren't seeing yet. Oh my God, I'm so inspirational and motivational. Guys, how am I so, oh my God, daddy. Anyways, putting all that 
that smartness aside, because, you know, blah, 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 I would actually say, <laughs> what the heck did I just do? <laughs> I would say Peter Parker's enhanced vision is actually a eh power. Because to be honest, sure, he can look at things from far away, but he could do the same just being a little closer. Like, the only downside from him moving closer is the distance, right? So I'd say this is eh. Like, the positive and the downside kind of are kind of, like, just similar. But now, ladies and gentlemen, the second last power, the second last power, let's talk about Spider-Man's speed reflexes. As you guys can see right here, one of Spider-Man's strongest abilities is how fast of a reflex he has. The way he's able to dodge all of these bullets and all of these drones in a blacked out atmosphere should tell you everything, everything, everything you have to know. Obviously, fast reflexes is a great power to have because what good is it having like spider senses and being able to like sense something's wrong behind you? Like imagine someone's about to hit you with a baseball bat, you sense it, but if you're not fast enough and you don't have fast reflexes, you're gonna sense it and it's just gonna hit you in the back of the head. Like that's really it. So you gotta have the reflexes to actually act on things. And this is so, so important with super villains when super villains have a bunch of power, super, super stuff. You have to be very, very fast to react to these things and actually survive and counter it. But obviously very, very good in high intense situations where Spider-Man must act. He must take the charge and act and do things fast, quick, fast. Guys, since we're talking about Spider-Man in the real world and how effective these powers really are practical nowadays, I actually think super fast reflexes, like how fast Spider-Man has, they actually have a little bit of drawbacks here and there. Say for example, you're Spider-Man and you're just now turning 22 years old. You're a fresh young guy turning 22, woo, 22, woo, woo, woo. And all your friends are at your party, right? You guys are just walking in the party, boom, boom, boom. It's a super dark alleyway, but you're walking and all of a sudden someone sneaks up behind you, runs up on you, boom, 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 boom. What you don't know is it's one of your secret best friends and he just came up to hug you. You know, he's like trying to surprise you, but you don't know that and you perceive it as a threat and you have such fast reflexes, you turn around, you punch him, and now that you're Spider-Man, you punch him so hard that now he's unconscious and on the floor. And obviously, I use this example to show you like the super baseline level, but this could become very fatal very quickly. Imagine Spider-Man has a gun, he's trying to find an enemy, shoot an enemy, and the enemy knows he has speed reflexes, so he throws out one of the good guys. He throws out one of like the hostages he's holding, so the enemy put a mask over a good guy, but Spider-Man has fast reflexes, he doesn't have time to process that actually that's a good guy, and he shoots the good guy, because he thinks is the bad guy. Like if you really think about it, there's a lot of opportunities where being too fast can actually hurt Spider-Man in the long run. But I think overall, fast reflexes is actually a very good ability. I'd say that. So yeah, when it comes to Spider-Man's fast reflexes, I'd say they're actually, they're great. We need a superhero that protects our city and knows what to do in the right moments. We can't have him get into a heated battle where things are moving fast, boom, attack, 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 and Spider-Man's not quick enough to keep up and he just dies, you know? We can't have that. When there's hostages on the line, when someone's about to fall off a bridge, we need a fast reflex thinker to come in and swoop and save the day. We need that. Now moving on to the final power of the list, radiation resistance. If you've made it this far, you obviously love Spider-Man so make sure you click this video right here where it talks about can you become Spider-Man like in this video I fully break down if you could actually become Spider-Man what the signs behind it would be and what you could do as a human Spider-Man so please go watch it for me thanks now for the final ability radiation resistance it's, it's cool I kind of just threw it in just because I thought it would be cool to talk about something else for a change and I think radiation resistance is like one of those abilities that's like it's kind of mid because obviously it's very important that Spider-Man doesn't die to one radiation bubble like if an enemy got his hands on our radiation gun and shot Spider-Man once with it he shouldn't die so obviously in the game you can see that implemented and how it takes a lot of radiation for him to even like faint or any of that right so i'd say overall it's pretty good but it's a very niche scenario it's saving him from radiation and that's kind of really it so it, there's not really much to say about this one so radiation resistance you can go and trash like i really don't care that much it's it's cool it's it's there for certain scenarios but most of the time it really won't help us in the real world anyway screw all of that ladies and gentlemen this right here is the updated 2023 Spider-Man Power tier list. This is every single one of Spider-Man powers ranked. Just to recap really quick, on the most insane level, Spider-Man's super strength is the best, best power he has. In the great section, we have his spider senses, we have his speed healing, and we have his fast reflexes. Then we move on down to the good, I guess, category, and here is his web swinging, here's his wall climbing, and here's his durability. And then we move even further down to the... Uh, section and here we have his fast running here we have his web shooting and here we have his enhanced vision then we move even further down to trash absolutely trash and here we can look at radiation resistance because radiation who really even talks about that ew l l nerd and then we move even further down to insanely bad nobody cares about spider tracers i really don't care that much l die i don't care please let me know in the comments what you agree with here what you disagree and why you agree or disagree i'd love to hear it and debate it in the comments below and besides that i'll see you guys in the next video because it's every single week baby i'm coming for it all baby let's go